Welcome to Launch Code, a premier business podcast, starring Evan Hafer, Matt Best, and Jared Taylor. Hey, yeah, um, this is Jim York. Uh, welcome to Launch Code. We got uh, we got some couple different uh, guests from a couple different genres here today. So, uh, crispy. You want to introduce yourself real quick? Well, I think everybody already knows me, but Crispy here, and uh, I'm excited because we got BJ in the house, and we were talking <laughs> to him earlier, and he said he's never done a podcast before, so... No, it's my first time, so be gentle if you guys can. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to walk you through it, man. Don't we're be easy with you. Yeah, so pretty excited, man. We got BJ in the house. Um, I met BJ last year, and uh, man, dude, you and, and Zori were just amazing right off the bat, and... Became instant friends. It was like, just dude, open arms, man. Just salt of the earth guy. And we went out and raced with you guys and Thanks, scared bro. the crap out of me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I passed out. I don't doubt yeah, it. I, I don't doubt I it. I passed out. I had no idea what happened. I guess I got all tensed up. We get out there and we, well, so <laughs> held your breath too long. Here's how I started. The night before we hung out, we, we were just, you know, just BSing around. Yeah. And then he's like, you know, you should come out tomorrow and let's go race. I got to, I got to. Test drive rampage, right? It yeah, was? we were t- doing a test block oh, so from it about was, fifty miles. So yeah. it was the full bore. It wasn't just a pre runner. No, no, it was uh, it was seventy five thousand uh, dollar small block runoff, one hundred fourteen octane. So no big all, deal. Yeah. Is all the all the horsepower nine hundred horse? Oh, um, yeah, it's a race. It's uh, rampage is the race truck that I've been racing for the last uh, ten years. Um, for those of you that are listening that don't really know what I do, I do uh, long distance endurance racing, uh, such as uh, the Baja 500, the Baja 1000. I've been fortunate enough to uh, do stuff with the Baja 1000 that nobody has done before. I've won it twice, uh, driving the entire distance. I won it in 2012. Mileage was 1,127 miles. I finished in 20 hours and 15 minutes exactly. And then 2013. Uh, I believe it's 15 hours. Uh, race mileage was 930 miles, but it was uh, much more technical. It's the loop race. Um, so that's what I do. Uh, I run a motorsports program called Baldwin Motorsports out of Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, focusing primarily on long distance off road racing. Um, and then we do some project builds with UTVs and pre runners and uh, street trucks and stuff of that nature. And your crew is awesome. I got, yeah. got to meet all of them, and everybody's I, super awesome. I got a good group of guys. It's nice when you have like a team full of guys. They all share the same passion. They're religious about uh, having an efficient program and and get good results. Um, you know, because it it really counts when you know we're trying to get a project finished or we're trying to get ready for the Baja One Thousand. Something happens. Something needs to get done. Uh, to have a good group of of dedicated guys, it's really important in a race team. No, and I but, saw it, man. When we went out there, it's kind of like. In a way, um, watching your guys work, because when we got there, it was, you were getting ready, they were unloading the truck, they, they were starting at, I mean, it was a bunch of different steps, and then it kind of brought me back to, like, kind of a little bit of the military side, where, you know, you, you have your squad leader, essentially, is what you are, and then, you know, you have your team, and they got to make sure that everything is rolling, so then when we roll out, everything's good to go, and that's what I saw on your team, everybody was just... On on it, and I was like, man, this is this is super cool, and I'd never seen anything on that level. I mean, obviously you, you are a professional, so I've I've never seen it in, in that um, that aspect. It's always been on TV, and you know, you just see the the little things. You just see the race on TV. You don't see the little things behind the scenes of what's going on and what it takes for you to drive. Like nobody yeah. sees the whole team behind. Yeah, walk us through that if you would, like. I know, like, before a race, what is the start time to finish time from... Because I know you guys tear you tear the truck completely down to the frame and then build it all back up again. Well, so, he doesn't sleep, I'll tell you that yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always watch him, and you know, I get up super early, and I was like, there, well, there's BJ. Yeah. At, at 4, 5, 6 in the morning, I'm like, aren't you racing tomorrow? And he's just like, I can't sleep. Yeah, <laughs> it's really hard to sleep. You got uh, I got a lot of... Uh, Adrenaline, it is an adrenaline-fueled yeah. uh, sport, but it's not how most people would think. Um, I get a lot of uh, anxiety and, and nervousness. It's very hard for me to fall asleep before a race such as the Baja 500 because we put so much work in, into the racetrack, so much work into pre-running, which is basically memorizing the race course. Um, you know, say the Baja 500 is 485 miles. 
I'm trying to remember every single turn, rock, crest, big ditch, uh, bump, uh, tree stump, um, you know, all this, all this stuff that I have to memorize. And you're playing all that in your head. Yeah. It's not like, it's not like traditional road racing, um, you know, or even, even rally racing. It's similar to rally racing. You only get one opportunity to run that one corner and there's no other corner like it on the planet or there's no other jump or crest or big ditch like it on the planet. Um, you only get one opportunity to do everything perfect and maximize your speed, um, you know, limit your risk depending on what's going on in that particular race. If, uh, for example, if I'm, you know, 45 seconds down, I have, uh, let me turn my phone off, and I have, uh, you know, somebody like a, a really fierce competitor in front of me, and I have 45 seconds to catch him in the next uh, 18 to 20 miles to the finish line of the Baja 500. I've got to take an exceptional level of risk. And a lot of times in my head, I'm trying to pull stuff off in situations like that where I'm like, I'm probably going to crash. Um, but let's see if we can, uh, you know, go outside of our comfort zone instead of running 95% uh, run 115% and see if we can get away with it and get to the finish line. And how fast were you going? Um, I My truck on the pavement, it's done 147 miles an hour in a race. No big. <laughs> yeah, just 147. Yeah, just, just a cool 147. And, well, you uh, know what? When he took us out because we drove, he yeah. picked us up, we were on his Porsche. And, uh, I was I kept looking <laughs> over at the dashboard and he's like, just well, no, I've seen the video. I've seen like, the videos. Uh, he's, yeah, he's cruising down the freeway doing 120. Just oh, yeah, he was going Sunday. faster than that. Yeah, I was scared. <laughs> oh, like, that's what I say. Cruising at 120. Well, the car wasn't scared, but I was like, I want to see how fat he pushes to. And I mean, he was getting out there, and I was like, yeah. But dude, when we got on that that thing, so I'll so circle back. We get out there. And dude, I'm a big fucking dude, and uh, he's trying to get me. He's trying to get me through this little window, and I'm like, man, my fat ass is not gonna fit in there. And then none of the suits really fit. Right. So I put it on, but it wouldn't zip up. So I was like, all right, let's do this. So we get in, and I was like, this is badass. And we take off, and did he? I mean, he he just that vehicle is phenomenal. And then the way that he drives, and he was explaining it to me. How you you don't really control the the vehicle? Is that what you told me, right? Or is yeah, it's well, it's uh, basically my th my theory on um, having a competitive uh, driving skill set is a lot of it's based off of uh, World Rally Champion drivers' principles. Is um, everybody's going to go the same speed uh, through through the bumps you know some people are going to take a little bit more risk than others but that obviously puts more wear and tear on the powertrain you could break uh, some kind of clutch or part or convert or whatever but not everybody can do what i've been fortunate enough to learn in the corners uh, whether it be really bumpy or whether it be a dome-shaped road uh, with a rain rut on the right side and rock wall and a hundred foot cliff and I'm going 75 <laughs> mile an hour. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Again, uh, not he a... Says so chill on. Yeah, like, just uh, like... Uh, I already go wide-eyed just picturing it, yeah. <laughs> that, that's the skill set that, uh, that I've been able to develop is, is the car control under... Uh, or truck control, uh, what have you, under situations where, you know, the truck is sliding sideways. And uh, I max my goal in, in, in cornering... Trophy trucks or, ra or off-road trucks are the most unstable uh, race vehicles that that you could possibly drive because of the way they're set up. They're designed to go through real big stuff, three and four foot bumps, 115, 120 miles an hour. And they have to have a lot of wheel travel to do it, which makes them very unstable in the corners. Well, yeah, I remember you taking me for a ride and... I was like, well, so what is this suspension like? And he, he he's, instead of explaining, he, you know, he drifts sure over. With you? Yeah, <laughs> drifts over. There's a median, and it's one of those big fucking curbs. And next thing you know, like he, I'm like, we're gonna, we're gonna hit that, and just slammed right into it. And you didn't even feel it, like yeah. that. Yeah, just yeah. no big deal. I was like, Damn. holy shit. All right. Yeah. <laughs> well, dude, that's why I was scared because we get out in the desert, knees all in ass, and I see water. You know, I had rain or something. I'm like. In my head, I'm thinking, you know, my pickup truck back at home, I was like, yeah, there's water, and then you hit it. You're going to hydroplane. Yeah, yeah you do the hydro, hydroplane for a little bit, and then stop. Exactly. Right and stop. So I'm holding on to everything inside <laughs> the truck, and I look over, and, and he's just like, he's so focused. You can see his eyes. He's just in another world. 
and he hits that patch, and I was like, oh, shit, oh, shit. Dude, the truck did nothing. It was just... Well, we're going 136 miles an hour. Yeah, it? yeah. <laughs> so, it's, you know, it, it doesn't, it's kind of like a, a, like a, like a water ski effect when you're going anything over 75 mile an hour. Um, obviously, the truck's going to lose mile an hour because it's not getting traction on the way across, like, ponds and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but if it drops below uh, 65, it's going to go to 25 miles an hour real fast if it's more than six inches of water. It just yeah. it has so much resistance. But if you're gotcha. going from 75, uh, you know, up to 140, if it's uh, – the faster, the better. If it's – it could be, like, a 200-foot – uh, pond, yeah, and it'll just glide right through. You got to make sure it's straight. I've had them go sideways before, and oh, it's really? not fun. I went sideways. Oh, I was pre-running. Geez. I was going about eighty-five miles an hour through a pretty fast road with some rollers, and a farmer had flooded the road, <laughs> like for fun. You know, and they're what? over there just to create an obstacle for you. Yeah, because the know, race isn't hard a, enough. It wasn't even a race. It was. Uh, it was just pre-running before the race. Whoa! So he flooded it, and he flooded it on one side of the rut. So there's like a. The shape of the road, if you're looking at it right down line of sight, there's a crown on the left side. Then there's a, a tire print where that's it's like a it's like a depreciation in the road. And then there's a crown in the center, and then another uh, depreciation of the road where the other side of the tire goes. So, so one of them, I think it was on the yeah, it was on the passenger side. It was flooded for 100 feet, and I was going about 85 miles an hour. So it had a lot of resistance on the right side of the truck and it wasn't there the day before. Yeah. It was like a yeah. rise where you can't see over the, over the top. <laughs> yeah. But I, I already been over it three or four times. I knew it was straight for, you know, 200 yards. Yeah. And in the race truck, I'd be going, you know, 110 over it. Um, so I was going about 85 in the pre-runner. I was clipping along and it was like too late to do anything about it. And it just grabbed the right side of the truck and just ripped the whole chassis uh, sideways. It didn't break anything, but like okay. the whole yeah, truck yeah, yeah. just pulled went you. to the right, yeah. and I end up going over like a four foot mound of dirt sideways through a farm fence, <laughs> and over into where like they're doing like all the agriculture and planting all that stuff. Oh damn! Through the mud, and then I had to drive back through the fence. And I, <laughs> the guys were like watching. <laughs> the guys were watching the whole time. They're like, really, this motherfucker just smashed a hundred feet of fence. You know, I felt super bad. I gave him a couple hundred bucks. And, and <laughs> it's, it's good to have a couple hundred bucks in Baja. Yeah, so, you're Baja. Yeah, so dude, um, shortly after that, dude, I, I honestly don't remember what happened, but I blacked out, and I, I woke up, and I was like, what happened? And he's like, what do you mean? I was like, dude, I think I passed out. <laughs> and he's like, you're good? I was like, I, I guess. He's like, all right, let's circle back. And we came back around, then he dropped me off. But I, until today, I, I have no idea. What it was, maybe I ten up too much and I stopped breathing. I don't know, but that's crazy. I, 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 I remember that very vividly because I think you're the first and only person that it's blacked out. But uh, I've had people throw up like all yeah. the time, I all the that. all the time. And the best people uh, to take for rides are um, people that have been offered a lot, and a lot of military guys. Uh, you know, no matter if they're infantry or, or special forces, regardless of, of, of what they did in the military, they all have a lot of exposure to uh, driving Humvees off road. Yeah. And they, you know, they have to learn how to drive those off road. So that's their programming. Like this is a military vehicle. It's a Humvee. It's amazing. It'll go through amazing things. The suspension is amazing. And in my world, that thing is a piece of shit. Yeah. Right. Oh, you know, yeah. A, a, a nowhere near. No, 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 no. Nowhere, nowhere near. near. We know it's a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I feel sad that yeah. you guys have to deal with that, but obviously it's better than having like an F-150. Oh, for sure. Yeah, but yeah, in yeah. terms of suspension and, you know, we got, uh, you know, a half million dollar piece of equipment that's designed to go real fast for real big stuff. So it's good that you guys, it's fun because you guys have that program. Like the Humvee is... You know, it may not be the nicest thing, but it actually goes through bumps a lot better than an F-150 yeah, yeah. or a regular Chevy four-wheel drive or, or a CJ7 Jeep or whatever. Yeah. So you guys have that program, like, this is the fastest thing I've been in in the dirt uh, as far as released to vehicles, a Humvee. Yeah. And my test section is three and four-foot bumps uh, right in front of, like, the pit. It's three and four-foot bumps for about a mile, two yeah. miles. Oh, yeah. And... You know, you take like a, a diesel truck will go through it at like 22 miles an hour. Yeah. Uh, a Jeep will go through it at 18 miles an hour without breaking the axles and breaking the wheels off. Right. Uh, a Raptor or, or a, tund a TRD Pro Tundra, Tundra will go through it like 30 miles an hour. And 
a Humvee will go through it like 30 miles an hour. Yeah. And my race truck will go through there. The only limiting factor is aerodynamic and traction. So it goes through there, wide open throttle, 900 horsepower at about 117 to 119 miles an hour. <laughs> just to just skim over 30. Yeah. No, just a no. ditch. <laughs> so he drops me off, and then he, he grabs me his crisp. He's like, let's go. And they do that thing. They turn around, and I just, just see the truck. Room just swing on by, and it was just bump off their bump. And dude, the truck wasn't even moving, man. It was just doing it's you know. crazy to, yeah, it's crazy to experience watching it outside or being inside. It's it's just a whole nother level that, yeah, you like, a, you know, you go for a ride in a Ford Raptor or you know, or something that's outfitted and supposed to be the highest end you can buy as a no. as a consumer. And then you're just like, <laughs> no. holy shit, this no. is this is garbage. No. I, I'm telling you, <laughs> I, I, we, I went off roading after that and did a bunch of other stuff, and I'm just like, this is shit, yeah, like, <laughs> this sucks. Like, I'm like. I, I need the suspension that BJ Strug has. <laughs> when you're running the the 500 or the thousand, what is the distance that you can go before you have to pit and get, you know refuel? And is there you know when you're doing that, you're wide awake the whole time. It's no like there's no brakes. It's maybe slug some water and just keep going, right? Yeah, no, my fuel stops 27 seconds. I get fuel and tires. I get uh, 85 gallons of fuel, two rear tires in 27 seconds. That's yep. that's our like no kidding our platform. So yeah, and I go. Uh, I go on 80 gallons of fuel. I think I go like 180 miles, depending on. I get less fuel mileage in uh, certain parts of the world where uh, it's real sandy and we're spinning the tires mm-hmm. a lot. And we're consuming a lot of fuel to do that, to paddle our way up to speed. Yeah, motor's working a little harder. And for yeah. those that don't know, like you have your crew that's following, right? As uh-huh. like your, your whole truck with fuel and everything. And yeah. once you stop, they, they kind of haul ass towards you and, and get it done. Or how, do, how does that work? So I have uh, I have six uh, chase vehicles, support vehicles. They're all they've all got tool beds on them. Uh, they're each one of them is fourteen thousand pounds. Are very heavy duty one ton trucks, diesel trucks, and uh, they all have a hundred five gallon uh, fuel system on it. That's pressurized. That's how we're able to get all that fuel in the truck. I mean, you think about it to to fill up. If you have a diesel truck to fill up your truck, it takes about five minutes to put thirty gallons. Yeah. In. Yeah. yeah. And we're doing uh, almost three times that in 27 seconds. So we're putting a lot of fuel in the truck real, real fast. It's a lot of pressure. Well, this um, isn't like a NASCAR pit stop where it's a nice like piece of asphalt, right? You're out in the you're out in the middle of nowhere. No, it's 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 all you know nastiness, cactuses on the ground. You know, you got to be careful. We lay we lay down carpet. Um, yeah, I'd love to have a NASCAR pit stop. There's like six or seven seconds. Their tire yeah, tire and wheel right. combo is is like 23 pounds yeah my they tire don't, and wheel they don't even have a, to trek it anywhere it's all right there right? yeah <laughs> <laughs> my tire and wheel combo is 135 pounds wow jeez so it's a lot of unsprung mass it's a lot of leverage on things so you look at the parts that are on my truck compared to that of a production vehicle and they're insanely huge they're all uh 4130 chromoly boxed arms the structure is extremely strong and it's all uh heat treated and uh, and pressure tested inside of SolidWorks uh, inside a computer before it's actually built. Gotcha. Damn. Um, <laughs> you see why? I, you see why I blacked out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. it. Like, I, I get it. I remember him taking the first corner with me, and I'm just being, I'm just thinking we're going over, and no, like he's just. Well, when he he's looking so at me he, like, yeah, he went in the pre runner. Oh, did he? Yeah, yeah the pre runner. Oh. Uh, yeah, the pre runner didn't have any power at all. The pre runner only makes like. Maybe 450 well, horsepower. We, we're coming back. Yeah, only 450 yeah, horsepower. No big deal. Well, we're coming back, and he knows I blacked out. So I'm like, oh, Beach is going to take it easy on the way back. Dude, we come back in this in this turn, towards where everybody was at. We were on one tire. The whole damn truck went up. I was like, oh, man, this guy's trying to kill me. What's going to happen overseas is going to happen here yeah. in the States. <laughs> I was scared. I was like, man, but but it was fun, dude. It was, it was a once in a lifetime experience. And, man, it, it was because you remember when we came in and then you kind of drifted sideways and then we punched it in? Yeah. Uh, off of that. Yeah, that's that we my, uh, that's like my, uh, kind of like my reset button for my car control test is, uh, you know, going through the dirt. Everybody can do that. But driving on the pavement in a race truck because yeah. they're so unstable. And they're just not designed to do that. It would be just like trying to take a road race car in, in the in the desert. So that's that's like my reset button, my test. It's a uh, 124, 125 mile an hour a left hand corner uh, into like a 30 mile an hour 90 degree right, and I yeah. drift the truck, you know, all the way around this 125 mile an hour corner, 
and I never straighten it out. I just transition into yep. making my straightaway as long as I can, laying as much power as I can from asphalt to, to, <laughs> yeah. to gravel. I, was, I almost shit my pants on that one. So. How long? Because, yeah, like for, for both me and Crispy, it's I'm ready to shit myself the entire time. As the driver, how long or like what does it take to develop those skills? What, what point do you get where you're like, you know what, 130 mile an hour corner, like I can handle that? Um, you know, a lot of it, just like anything else, and I think this thing is – this idea is overlooked by a lot of people that should be more successful than they are. Um, I've learned, I, I've, I don't have any talent, so to say. And I, I don't know that, uh, I don't know that talent really exists to the level that people actually believe it does. I, you know, I have a, a skill set book, you know, my book is just a bunch of pages ripped, ripped out of other people's books. You know, everybody I've ridden with a lot of drivers. I've learned, what they're good at, what they're not good at. And I take what they're, what they're good at and I try to duplicate that action in, in the race car. And that's, that's been a 22 year process for me. Um, and now I'm, you know, the last 10 years, 12 years, I've been uh, at a point where I've realized that I can do X, Y, Z better than everybody else. And there's only two or three other guys that compete can compete with me when on a good day when I'm running well, uh, trucks running good. It's, you know, like Robbie Gordon, Bryce Menzies. Um, those are like, those are like my two guys that gotcha. have amazing skill set. But, you know, it's for me, I was passionate about the sport and I was passionate. It's very interesting. It's a fourth dimensional form of motorsports that is so grueling. Uh, I wanted to be good at it more than anything else. And I wanted to learn from people that were smarter than me. I learned from Larry Raglan. Yeah. Uh, trained with him for, for several years. Uh, Brian Collins, Pat Dean, um, Robbie Gordon. I was mm -hmm. kind of a, he was kind of a mentor to me when I went and did Dakar in 2000. I did Dakar in 2008. I actually beat him too in 2008. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and those are the best guys in the world. Those yeah. are WRC yeah. world champions, multi time world champions that have, you know, their Dakar program uh, for VW is $40 million God. for one event. Wow. And I beat a lot of those guys. I was seventh overall in a two wheel drive uh, car that when everybody, uh, the, and this car was a $600,000 piece of equipment as it relates to how it's put together, all the electronics that it has in it, yeah. all the, information that we have access to analyze and make the car quicker um when like the v vw cars like five million dollar cars five six million dollar cars all carbon fiber hulls no like we don't have access to any of that yeah you know Jeez. So, and you were still able to beat him in that like in the, in the yeah vehicle, I beat a lot of the guys beat steph and peter hansel which was like you know i i idolized them from being a world rally champion right um I took first in my class, um, and then I was seventh overall, the the top 30 best uh, World Rally Champion drivers in the world. And uh, I'd never done Dakar before. And how, how long is that race? They were really fucking pissed. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't doubt it. <laughs> I don't doubt feel, it at all. Yeah. How does that feel like beating a guy that, that taught you, you know, what you know and that you look up to? Because I, I know, like, whenever we go out of the stream range and I always shoot Matt, I'm like, Yes, or I'll shoot, or maybe that hasn't happened. But the day that I, I'll shoot Evan, I'm gonna be like the happiest guy in the world. I'm gonna be like, "Fuck you guys, I'm out." Right? I'm never, never shooting again. Never I'm out. Yeah, yeah, never trying to get pistol again. Pistol, yeah. yeah, that's that's me when I like because I've been a jiu-jitsu practitioner for 15 years. Well, I'm a purple belt. I'm like a six-year purple belt now. But yeah, I know that feeling. I, if I tap a black belt, I just go home. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, oh, shit. yeah. Fuck yeah. Not going to get better yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no, yeah, the, the feeling of like having these guys that I really looked up to, um, that I wanted to, that I idolized, I wanted to have a successful motorsports program and a skill set that they possessed. And I worked so hard to gain that skill set and then add on to it and be able to drive around them. And I've been fortunate enough to where I've had guys that were my heroes. And it's a whole field full of, full of guys, like five or six guys. And I've been really fortunate in my life and my experiences, my opportunities to completely fucking humiliate these guys, you know, and that's, I like it. that's killer. That's a feeling like that you can't get anywhere yeah. else. These to humiliate. I mean, think of Superman. Yeah. You know, yeah. think of Superman bench pressing uh, a Prius and you come over there and you bench press a locomotive. Yeah. You know, it's that type of feeling. That's awesome. 
That's a good, yeah, that's a great way that's to put that. That's awesome. Yeah. Dude, like, man, I, I, dude, I, I just got to give it to you, man. The way that you treat, um, I'm going to segue into this, uh, the way that you treat the military service members, man, dude, thank you so much, man. You, you do so much that I don't think a lot of people see, and uh, you take a lot of these dudes' classes, and the stuff that you're doing in the 2A community, man, it, it's amazing, bro. It, it's great to see, you know, you Thanks, at 2, bro. 3 in the morning when you can't sleep, and he's drawing on... I was going to say, yeah, we didn't, we, we didn't meet him out at the racetrack. We're at, you were yeah. at SHOT Show hanging out, yeah, right? I'm just, and I watch him draw, and I'm like, fucker, slow down. <laughs> yeah. You're making the rest of us look bad. <laughs> like, no, I, I, it. I, I, there's really no thanks needed for our military and law enforcement community. I, you know, I'm a big fan of everything you guys do. I wanted to be a Marine, you know, when I was a kid. Um, I obviously ended up taking a different path. I wasn't I – sh I should have, you know, I should have gone, and I know I'll get the guys – on well, my gram right now, I'd be like, never too late, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, I, I idolized those guys. You know, I, as uh, as a kid, I watched movies of you know Delta Force with Chuck Norris and, yeah. and movies like that, and I really idolized those guys. And I always loved shooting. And uh, you know, the thing for me that really built my skill set as it relates to defensive pistol shooting is having a kid. You know, and, and uh, that will increase your performance uh, in life, and yeah. you will work your ass off to be the best person you can be, the best father you can be. And for for me, I I had a situation in traffic uh, where I didn't have my gun on me years and years ago. My son was my son's ten now, but it was about ten years ago. Yeah, he was I think he was one or almost one, and uh, I was taking him to lunch, and I had a situation where I should I should have had a gun. And, uh, and I left it in the other car. Mm -hmm. And then for me, I started, uh, it was just my goal to be the most dangerous father in the building sure. at any given time. Yeah. And so I started studying, uh, Magpul dynamics videos and doing a lot of dry practice at home and, uh, did that for several years. I never, I never took any pistol rifle classes to the last five years. And then I started, uh, training with, uh, training with Barrett. Yeah. And so Barrett, true exodus, he, uh, he's not a military law enforcement nope, guy at nope. all, but you cannot deny the Dude, that guy can speed shoot. Yeah. and that the bullet placement. crazy talented. I mean, yeah. dude picks up any pistol. It could be your pistol and he'll, I'll shoot you with your own pistol. Right. Yeah. Like he, he's, he's good. I give that guy props. Yeah. So I've, uh, that was, that was a major turning point in, uh, how I carried my gun. Cause I've had a gun on me for the last 15 years, yeah. 20 years. And uh, how I carried my gun and how I trained and how I practiced, what my goals were. Um, and it's, you know, my goals have been, you know, learning a little bit more about low light tactics. A lot of stuff happens at night, all the bad yeah. stuff. Right. And being able to neutralize uh, one person with a force multiplier, whether it be brass knuckles, a baseball bat, or a. Yep. a rocket launcher whatever yeah, yeah, yeah or uh for force multiplication in for in the form of multiple people that have bad intentions and so my balance of speed and accuracy with the pistol has gone way up from working with barrett um we became friends and then uh took some classes from uh, uh took dynamos uh, alliance pistol one class yep best pistol one class i ever took because it was all escalation of force yeah um and being a jujitsu practitioner it was nice to see those good things combined. Yeah, that, kind of, that yeah. combined. And, and I've worked with, I, I was fortunate enough to be involved in jujitsu where, you know, and no disrespect to women or children, but there were, where there were none at the time. Yeah. And if there were, there was a couple girls in the class, but, uh, the, the only people that were there, including the women were people that wanted to be professional fighters and people that wanted to hurt other people. Gotcha. You know, people that want to be, and I was like, yeah. well, I was kind of a street fighter. It's kind of yeah. the other way around, yeah. I was like, a, like a, like a, when I was younger, I was like a bar fighter, a uh, street fighter, because I had like a bunch of guys that were always, you know, neutralizing uh, people that were picking on other people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of like. That's my favorite thing to do. I know. It feels so <laughs> good. Right? It feels so good. So, uh, and I got, I got smashed in a, a street fight by two guys like when I was like 24 years old and that's when I started training. Yeah. I've been friends with Dana White for 20 years. He was training. He had just had the OC for two years, but, um, it's cool to take the Dynamus Alliance class with Dom and, uh, and see what they do, man, the, the, the things that, that they teach, it's like, dude, that's forever. Right. Yeah. That's going to hurt that guy forever. He's yeah. never going to forget. <laughs> that's, that's not a full recovery. Yeah. yeah. He's never. Yeah. 
before he ever does the same thing again. Yeah. And jiu-jitsu is really effective, and so is boxing. Um, but, you know, next day, the guy's fine. Like, they're teaching, like, hyperextending necks and, and breaking uh, permanent damage to ligaments in the leg and the feet. And it's awesome to learn that type yeah. of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Um, and then I had, uh, in his class, I had uh, uh, force on force with the, the sim rounds. Oh, which yeah. was super cool. I got jumped by That's three guys. I got jumped by three <laughs> yeah. guys. And he, and he tells everybody, like, what you're good at. You know, so he told everybody, like, I was really, really fast. And get on his gun and make sure his gun doesn't come out. But I managed to get out and smoke all three guys. Nice. Kid, but that was uh, – that's I have a lot of fun training, um, doing low lights. We just did a low light class. And, uh, you know, above all, as it relates to – you know, my interactions with, uh, military guys, you know, uh, you guys are our heroes. I just do not think that you guys get anywhere near the respect that you guys deserve. If anybody's listening to this, um, which I know you guys have a huge audience, there's tons of people listening. You got a guy that, you know, that's in uh, law enforcement. You got a guy that, you know, that's in, uh, the military, regardless of what they do, tell that motherfucker, thank you, because you do not realize uh, what kind of world you would live in without them, without good human beings willing to build a skill set based on being violent so other people, you know, uh, don't come in this country and do bad things to your family, you know? So if you know somebody in the military, tell them thank you. If you meet somebody that's in the military or a vet, shake their hand, say, you know, express your gratitude for their service. And, uh, you know, I'm forever grateful for... Uh, our, our military, you know, brothers and sisters in the military in all different branches. So I, I, uh, that's my favorite part about SHOT Show. Yeah. You know, because we have so many special operations guys here um, that are smashing bad guys all the time. It's the coolest thing to hear their Somebody stories. They come and hang out here. Yeah, they it's come like and hang out here. It's so cool. That's like, my favorite part. You get shit face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we were talking about it on the way up here. Right. He's like, you know, this this is the one trade show that I see everybody just get hammered every day. Oh, they don't <laughs> hold back, man. I go to SEMA. You know, yeah. I'm I'm big at SEMA. I'm all, at all the SEMA parties, and they don't they don't roll like you guys do. You, you guys party like half like, throttle. Well, you know yeah, what? The, totally half throttle. But you just said it a little while. But you know what the difference is? Is that some of these guys are gonna get redeployed again, and who knows that they're gonna come back or not? So yeah, it's just one of those things, man. And and honestly, it's just this. Shaw Show is a big fucking reunion, man. Everybody comes together. That's from what I the see. Country, and it's just like. It's it, wonderful. Yeah. Dude, it's just like, when was the last time I saw you? It was last Shaw Show, right? Yeah. And then we it's we stay in touch, but we live exactly. on separate sides of the planet, and, you know? But once we see each other, it's like we pick yeah. up where we left off. It's the same thing here yeah. with everybody. And that, yeah. that's yeah. what is amazing about Shaw Show. And that's why I love it. And that's why I love coming and just meeting everybody again. Yeah, that's I love cool that. community that all kind of comes together once a year. Yeah, yeah. it's great. Yeah. But listen, we gotta get you down to Texas, man. We we gotta bring you down and I love Texas. I, I got a I got a little helicopter that's waiting on you to so shoot some pigs. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> and then you got, yeah. right. I'm a pilot. Do you guys know that? No, are you really? Yeah. No kidding. I'm a helicopter pilot. What? Even better than a regular helicopter pilot that has a license. I don't I'm a pilot that doesn't have a license. Really? So that's kinda cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well dude, uh uh, Brendan Harold, as we was talking yeah. about, yeah, I love him. Yeah, we Great can get out his, his chopper and go do some yeah, stuff. Yeah, I actually flew that chopper. Did you really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, because he took it down to Mexico, right? Uh, no, I, I flew, flew it? it in. Uh, I flew it in Texas when I went to uh, F one to go. Oh, I, actually, right. in Houston when that, I when I drove right, the rescue the missions. Hurricane stuff. That's right. We were talking about. Yeah, that the me other and Dan day. were doing the the rescue missions in the uh, in the. Uh, I got to do that for three days in the the big military trucks. Yep, yep, I remember that. That was awesome. Um, but yeah, dude, you gotta come down, man. We'll go shoot some pigs out of it. Hell have a good yeah. time. Check out the headquarters, the Black Rifle headquarters down in San Antonio. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and just meet everybody, man. I think you guys will have I'd fun. I love that. We'll go shoot, blow up some shit, and just yeah, have a good old yeah. time. That'd be awesome. I want to yeah, kill man. a pig with a knife. That's doable. I, I can make that happen <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah. Hey, one phone call, <laughs> done. <laughs> just show up, and we'll get it done. Because that's Easy. like serious, you know. So I took. Um, I took two Gold Star kids. Both of their fathers were uh, SEAL Team 6 guys. Uh -huh. Fortunately, got killed in the line of duty. That's and um, I've known these kids since they were 14. They're 19 years old now. And uh, this past season, I, I called their moms and I was like, hey, listen, I want to take the boys hunting. 
we're gonna set it up and then she's they were ex- just beyond excited they're like make it happen so booked their flights flew them in here and uh, flew them to south texas we take them out of the ranch and one of my buddies comes over with his dogs and he goes hey you guys want to go chase uh, pigs with the dogs so the boys can stab them with the knives and uh, the boys are having dinner and they listen to the like they both get out of the table they run upstairs they come back down both of them have daggers from their fathers <laughs> That their fathers had left oh, behind. Wow. Oh my God! Uh, and they brought him. He's like, "Can we use these?" And we're like, "Yes." So That's the awesome. next morning, we went out, let the dogs out. You hear the dogs barking, and we start making our way in. Dogs um, pin the pin the hog down. We come over, just kind of step on them, and then the kids all stabbed him, dude. And the That's their faces, awesome. man, were That's great. Uh, yeah, they were super excited. And you know, when they went home, their their both of their moms called me, and they're like. What did you do to him? He will not stop talking about this hunt. Like, he wants to do it every year now. And I'm like, well, we'll do it every year. That's what they want to keep doing. I'd love to take my my 10-year-old son, Jaden, out there. Bring and yeah, bring him on I'll down. Him. Yeah. Yeah, He's him such a G, man. He's, well, I've been I, I shooting him, with him, and he can shoot. Yeah, he can shoot. I, I, I'm... Uh, I got him on a seven inch, uh, uh, 300 blackout with the, the Omega suppressor. Nice. Cause you guys do, uh, uh, you told me last time we were hanging out, you guys do a yearly trip, right? He goes, uh, duck hunting in California. I think it is. Yeah. Stockton, California. Um, it's uh, Mandeville Island. Uh, Tony Marnell owns it. He built most of the casinos here on the strip. He's a, in, obviously in casinos construction, but, uh, it's, I've never seen anything like it in pictures. This, this yeah. duck hunting place, it's amazing. It's beautiful, and there's a little bit of wind, a little bit of fog. These ducks and geese will fly right down the muzzle. Damn. So I, my, my dad's actually been clocked. Yeah. By uh by a duck. What? Yeah. He's been hit in the face by a duck. Really? Actually, we both have. No kidding. Like just yeah. sitting there and I smacked them. Like the birds. He knocked him. My my dad is the gangster. As a, he does not touch a pistol or a shotgun or a rifle all year long. And he brings birds out of the sky that are out of lethal effective range. Really? Jeez. He is a G dude. <laughs> He's so surgical with I his would, duck and hunting. I wouldn't, I wouldn't guess it because I met his dad. We hung out one night and he just... Yeah. Real cool dude. No, he's a murderer, man. <laughs> he's a murderer. You got to bring him too, then. Yeah, yeah. dude, bring, he would love it. He That'd would. Be awesome. Bring yeah. all three. Yeah, yeah we'll all three of y'all come. Let's go. Yeah, dude, I'm be telling you, you let three me generations. Know when, I'm gonna set it up. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. I have to get my yeah. schedule figured out, but I'd love, come on. love to. Yeah, what do you got coming up next? Is it? Uh, I've got the uh, uh, Toyo Tire Invitational at uh, in St. Johnson Valley in California. Okay. Um, top twenty of the best uh, trophy truck drivers in the world showing up and um it's gonna be really interesting 80 mile laps none of us have been around the course before it's where they do king of the hammers but okay, it's not yeah. on, it's not on the rock crawling right part, obviously our trucks wouldn't make it 10 feet through that stuff but it's it's in the open desert part of it oh okay. wow gotcha yeah Damn. so is that gonna be televised or uh uh or is this i'm not i'm not go? sure i'm not sure if it's gonna be televised or not it, oh. it might be I, I gotta come out of one of these races yeah. over here, man. I, yeah. I know we've been talking about it. I gotta come and just check it out. Yeah, it's great. It's great. And then are you doing um? What was I gonna say? Are you doing the you doing Bajas again this year? Correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep, and I'm doing the Invitational, the Mint 400, the Baja 500, the Baja 1000, and then I have a bunch of different film tr- projects scattered in between all that stuff. We're gonna see another recoil in the mix. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to get funding for another recoil. Um, yes. It's. Uh, you know, it's a million dollar production. Right. Yeah. 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 Filming with cameras that cost $130,000 each. And yeah. Got, just, you know, I mean, those, like seven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, those are definitely a production, but they're always like, that's, that's what my I just wait to favorite. watch. Yeah. That's like one of my favorite things to do. do. That That is one of my favorite videos that you've yeah. ever put out. That, oh my God. All of them are amazing. Yeah. 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 But Cuba's I love watching fun. that one. I've seen it, I don't know how many times. Cuba is really special because it's the first film, it's the first American film to come out of Cuba since 1961. Really? So that was I didn't a really realize cool that. thing. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. That, that makes sense now that you say that, but I never, like, I never yeah, thought no about kidding. that at all. And it was sketch. It was really <laughs> well, I sketch. I remember trying to get you some stuff, and you're like, man, we're dealing with the, with the Cubans, man. Just, no. <laughs> no, <laughs> they're crazy. <laughs> and they don't give a shit who you are. Right. You no. know, and we had, to, we had to pay, we had to cut a bunch of red tape financially. Yeah. You know, with, and getting permits to, like, jump over the river on the beach and <laughs> yeah. jump down this staircase and do this. 
And every day, we ran into a problem every single day. With uh, them? Yeah, we'll have, we'll have a cop on the, uh, on the standing on the front of my ramp saying, this is not your country, you can't do this shit in here. And we already got everything worked out with the, the government, we got permits for everything. And there'd be a cop. It's funny to see because they have like, uh, you know, a semi-automatic single stack. Yeah. Uh, pistol that I've never seen before. It looked like that came out of Lake Mead. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, dude! Yeah. How 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 impressed were they when they saw your vehicle? Because you know they they these people literally have boat parts in their cars just to make it run. Yeah. Uh, Oh, let's talk about their vehicles real quick. Yeah, talk, I was gonna say. We'll, we'll talk about my. Their, well, my, so my vehicle, they're like in America, anywhere in America, I bring my vehicle as a display vehicle. People look at it and they're like, man, I can't believe the craftsmanship. Uh, I can't believe uh, I've never seen a vehicle like this. I've never seen a truck like this. Uh, I, I, you don't get to see race. I've seen race cars, but nothing like this, this is amazing. That's the impression you get over here in the United States yeah. or in Baja. In Cuba, they look at it like it's a fucking spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. They haven't seen a production vehicle uh, that's newer than 1961 since 1961. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know, so, and, and all their cars, it's, here's a, here's a good comparison. Take a 55 Bel Air classic car, right? A 55 cherry red uh, Bel Air. Here in the United States, um, it's got a $20,000 paint job. It's got an LS7 with a, a Whipple 4-liter blower on it. it makes 950 horsepower. Yeah. You know, the, right. the, the, the desirable yeah. 55 Bel Air. That's sure. the build that they're Being aiming for. Yeah. Yeah. With with a 4 L80, uh, you know, uh, automatic 4-speed transmission and good rear end, you know, awesome track bars. Some of them have cantilever suspension in it. But the, everything's all cherry. The inside is like... Uh, uh, cream white, you know, really nice. Leather's flawless. Yeah, you know. So in uh, in Cuba, that same car <laughs> is a taxi. You're right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it doesn't have uh, it doesn't have the twenty five thousand dollar plant power plant of you know like an LS motor with a yeah. supercharger on it. Right. It's got a Russian diesel six cylinder or five cylinder engine <laughs> that makes eighty horsepower and hundred and twenty foot pounds and it smokes like a fucking locomotive. <laughs> the the tires are so bald you can see the air inside of them. <laughs> it's belts they more have than no tires. shocks. Yeah. Just <laughs> springs, leaf springs, and every time you turn a corner in them, it rubs a like a big hole in, in the wheel well. <laughs> when you get inside the car, there's wooden panels and and Ooh. a dragonfly globe shifters and chain steering wheel and the whole yeah. the whole inside of the car smells like prison sex and burnt hair. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, and they, they've got three million miles on them. Oh, yeah. So it's it's quite the same exact car from the United States to Cuba is vastly different. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it sounds a little. Oh man, they don't yeah. even put the top up when it rains. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even. <laughs> that's, that's, it, that's the only time it <laughs> yeah, gets washed. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> this might float. If it, if it gets flooded, it's gonna float. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We, we so that was very special. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, listen, brother, we, we really, really appreciate you for coming on. And dude, seriously, we can't wait to have you in Texas. Yeah, we Absolutely. need to get you down. Just just thank, you, man. thank you for the invite. And, and, thank and you for having me. I'm pretty me sure in. everybody on here knows who you are, but let, let them know your social medias and where they can follow you and find you and, and all yeah, that and good he, stuff yeah. so they can come check you out. Uh, yeah, you can follow my very, very not boring, uh, very exciting <laughs> adventures um uh on instagram i'm bj baldwin uh, at bj baldwin on instagram it's my name and then i'm starting a youtube channel uh brand new i only have like a thousand subscribers right now but we nice. just launched it this week yeah. it's going to be under bj baldwin and then my facebook is under this silly name that uh i thought was funny but it stuck ballistic bj baldwin yeah, yeah. um but it was like a i like it i, I know everybody likes I like it. it i did it to like make i put it on my truck to make fun of like another driver that had some silly name in yeah. 2003 <laughs> and it just stuck that, that is what's like, gonna happen there for sure yeah, yeah but uh <laughs> 
It's uh, at BJ Baldwin on Instagram, BJ Baldwin on YouTube, uh, Ballistic BJ Baldwin on Facebook. Um, I have a Twitter account, but I don't really use it. Yeah, neither do I. Yeah. <laughs> so. Awesome, brother. Well, thank you so much, man. Yeah, it's really been a pleasure, man. You, brother. Thank you. It's been a pleasure hanging out with you guys. I look forward to this this week every single year. So. Heck yeah. Absolutely. Cool.